Where is the Israeli left? That's the question that continues to be asked as the country heads to early elections. Even as the right-wing parties splinter, polls show that current Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is headed for a decisive victory come April 9th. But why is it that the left-wing representation is failing to put up a fight? Well, joining me in studio to take a closer look at this issue, founder of the Front for the Protection of Democracy, Uri Zaki, and former member of Israeli Parliament's ruling Likud party, Michael Kleiner. A pleasure to have you with us, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Ori, you. we'll start with you. The narrative is that the left barely stands a chance of putting up a fight, uh, of really gaining power in this next race. Why do you think that is? First of all, you know, we're three months, just over three months uh, before the elections. And, you know, remember, uh, you know, where Trump was, let's say, three months before the elections uh, with Clinton. He ended up being the president of the United States. It can happen here, too. Um, but, you know, uh, the polls right now and, and for the last uh, uh, several years have been showing uh, Netanyahu in the lead. I believe it's, it's actually because most of the non-right in Israel gave up on being left. Apart from the Meretz party, which, mm. you know, raises the, hoisters, mm. hoists the, the, the flag of, of us being progressive, us being left, uh, all other parties in the, what, what we call the center-left bloc, is kind of pulling away from being left. And I think at the end of the day, um, if I'll go back to the American elections, you know, you had Bernie Sanders being very clear about his uh, uh, positions. You had Trump being very clear about his uh, positions. And I think it, we're in an era that the, the public wants to, uh, to know exactly what you stand for. They, mm. the, it doesn't want to have this vague notion of... So why is that then in Israel, that we're seeing the center become so crowded? I think it's a it's a miscalculation and 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 a misread of, of the where the public stands. I think uh, if you t if you take uh, uh, public opinion polls and, and you see that most of the Israelis are right leaning, so instead of saying let's you know let's try to persuade it persu persuade the the public and you know and we've been in, in in other times in our recent history you know when when Sharon pulled out of the Gaza. Uh, strip. He had an overwhelming majority to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th there was no problem uh, mm -hmm. back then. I think g uh, giving in to the uh, notion that the, uh, there's no left in Israel and the left can't bring you uh, results is, is part of the problem. And also, it's, it's also a personal problem. I think, you know, Netanyahu uh, is portraying himself and is being portrayed and uh, being uh, 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 portrayed by, by the Israeli public itself as a uh, uh, leader with a no replacement, um, you know, can't be replaced. Uh, I don't think that's the case, but so far you don't have anyone, uh, you know, a leader that is, that is uh, uh, agreed upon by all the non-right okay. uh, bloc in Israel. So then to you, Michael, the fact that Netanyahu is looking to lower the uh, electoral threshold, I suppose, to protect uh, the right-wing majority, what does that point to? What could Netanyahu perhaps be afraid of? No, it's a technical point because there are many uh, new parties in the right. So uh, there is a fear that, you know, um, people will vote for parties that uh, will not pass the threshold and artificially... Uh, we will lose tens of thousands of votes right. that won't right, and the uh, votes will be wasted. So he uh, tries to do it, and it's also um, important, I believe, for the Arab parties, because today uh, the high threshold forced uh, all the Arab parties, which are uh, uh, totally different. Some of them are religious, some of them are anti-religious, secular, uh, and they have all, some are an Arab nationalist, some are communists, and they all have to unite, because otherwise they don't pass the threshold. Uh, I guess if we uh, um, bring down the threshold to 2%, it will enable all the parts of the society, and especially the Arab society, to be represented in the Knesset, and also the rights. There is a party called Strength for Israel, uh, uh, which is, uh, has a strength of two, two and a half votes, uh, in the, uh, kne sits in the Knesset, which is much more than some people that, like Lapid or, or Gantz, if they go home, the parties disappear. Sure. Here you have a, a, a nucleus, and you, for, uh, you force them to unite. But do you think that the formation of this, this, this new party by Yelat Chaked and Naftali Bennett, formerly of the Jewish uh, Home Party, do you think that that has spooked Netanyahu? Could they change the game? I, I, 
uh, yes, but once again, it's not substantial. It's technical. Because if they will uh, drag votes from small right-wing parties that will not pass the threshold, it can cause the situation that uh, we, uh, Likud, the right-wing will get 55% and will lose the election. So they want to fix it. Uh, I believe at the end of the day, other parties in the right will unite, like the Arab parties united. And at the end of the day, uh, not too many votes will be wasted. To the contrary, last time Eli Ishai was running with Yahad, got almost four seats, mm -hmm. all were wasted. Now they will unite with the uh, national home, which uh, Ayelet Shaked and Bennett left. Right. and they will pass the threshold, and we save three seats for the right. Now, Uri, there's a lot of talk that you're thinking about running in this left-wing merits party, as you're talking about it, the only voice for the left. Of course, we know it's headed up by your partner, Tamara Zandberg. What are your plans? Uh, to be honest, uh, I haven't decided yet. I'm uh, thinking about it. I, I ran in the last two, uh, two cycles. I uh, was also, you know, I'm very senior in the uh, party, but... Um, I'll, I'll let you know one, once I decide. If you, if you I, I believe he's a good man. He will be elected despite he's, uh, uh, he's uh, connected with Tamar. It shouldn't, it shouldn't sure. disqualify him. Why, why do you think, I suppose, it's, an, it's important, I suppose, that someone like you comes on board to the left-wing party when, of course, uh, the polls continue to show that hands down Netanyahu's going to win and the left doesn't stand a chance? Could you be the hope for the merits party for the left wing? First of all, uh, I think part of being lefty is being uh, optimistic and, uh, you know, always see progress and, and believing in in, in hope and in uh, in the future, I, I sincerely think that that Netanyahu uh, uh, failed as a prime minister. He has a lot of baggage. Uh, I do think that there is a real ch chance, also because what uh, Michael said, uh, you know, uh, uh, about uh, the the. It's very interesting, by the way. You have a, a higher threshold and a plethora of uh, of parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, our viewers, let's say in, in America, are used to uh, two parties. In in in, uh, in the UK, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe four parties, five parties. Right now, we have over, I think, I believe, 14 or 15 uh, party that, parties that might enter the Knesset. Some of them won't. Right. It's, it's quite crazy. In terms of really giving Benjamin Netanyahu some kind of competition, we're hearing at least from some centrist parties, and especially the, the Zionist Union, saying to, uh, to label and to even to merits, we need to unite, we need to come together uh, to really form some kind of threat. But they don't could, 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 what, what do you mean? Sibi Livni would call, Lidney does, of course. Yeah. So could Merits consider joining forces with some of these centrist parties in order to really stand a chance to actually uh, ensure that these polls, perhaps, as you say, anything can change, give Benjamin Netanyahu a run for his money? Look, uh, right now the, the call for uh, un, uh, union is within the centre, not in the left. They, they don't consider us and we don't consider, you know, we don't want to uh, be in a party that as I said before, shying, shying away from uh, a clear ideological message. Having said that, I do hope that, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the members of Knesset from those parties who are uh, progressive in their ideology, who are progressive in their uh, uh, voting, would join uh, merits to have a bigger, uh, clear ideological uh, left bloc. I think what we're missing. Uh, in, in our uh, system, and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, Michael Kleiner is as someone who's known for his uh, uh, devotion to ideology, mm -hmm. we're, we're missing an ideological, uh, ideological parties in, in Israel. And, and all this uh, talk about center, 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 we have real problems here, we have real debates here, and we, want, uh, and we, and we need to uh, fight for them, you know? There's another point. Likud is a democratic party, which is grassroots, which uh, delegates to the Knesset are elected by the whole membership of Likud. Same goes with Labour Party, same goes with Merits. Unfortunately, uh, those new centre parties are parties of a one-man party. Uh, take, for example, uh, Yair Lapid. Yair Lapid uh, party gets in the poll 13, 14 seats. If Yair Lapid decides to resign and leave politics, they get nothing. If Labour Party, Avi Gabay will go, if, if Netanyahu goes home, all the polls show that Likud right. will get two seats less, two seats more, well, the same. Same with Labour, same with Merits. Well, we still Labour have 99 pa Labour days. Party, we have by the way, break, Labour so Party, by the off. way, if Avi, <laughs> if Avi Gabay will leave, maybe we'll get more seats.